You are listening to The Good Girl Podcast. My name is Cameo King, your host, The Good Girl Podcast, a place where we are redefining what it means to be good. There wasn't a space for women to be themselves in every facet of their lives. The Good Girl Podcast was created to offer that space to have conversations with a gutted truth without restriction. So join us every week to unpack your own set of questions and confessions in this good and safe space. And I think this week is unique and that uh, we have the opportunity to unpack some of those questions to go a little bit deeper. And one of those conversations that I think sits on the hearts and minds of a lot of people in different ways, but we really, I don't know if I've ever heard a conversation around this, right? And it's about what happens to unanswered prayers. Um, And in the context very much of faith, pray and it's gonna happen, have faith and it's gonna happen. But we know all too well that 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 is not the case. And I had a conversation um, earlier this week on Monday uh, with Rika of the Single You podcast, and that's really what started this conversation. So I kind of wanted to have a part two with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring Rika on. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh wait, I can't hear you. You on mute. Hey, girl. <laughs> Look, I was trying to be respectful and not, you know, get the noises. I'm over here drinking my tea and oh, I had to have it on mute. But um, no, I'm here and I'm excited to continue this conversation because it's so good. It's it, so good. <laughs> it is. It is because I think a lot of times we very much hear the testimonies. We see the manifestations of prayers and prayers being answered. And that's what we're attracted to. Right. Uh, I think you mentioned it like Sierra's prayer. Like, sis, what is your prayer? Um, so I can pray this and this can happen for me too, but we know all too well, or I don't think it's promoted as much that Sierra's prayer may not work for Cameo, may not work for Rika and it may not be. (laughs) Okay. And we may not get that thing. Like that is something we have to grapple with, something we have to digest that as much as we desire, as hard as we pray, as Mm -hmm. much as we jump, flip, turn around in circles and, and follow whatever person's 10 step plan we still may not get what we desire. So what in fact happens to those unanswered prayers or what about those unanswered prayers? So Rika, um, this question started with you. So tell me how you got here. Yeah, so I um, follow somebody on Instagram and his name is escaping me. And But he's a therapist and he grew up in a church just like we did. Pew babies, I'm a, a, a pastor's niece. So I guess a PN, so a PN, I don't know. Anyway, my dad's sister and her husband are uh, pastors. And so obviously very much grew up in church. Mm -hmm. And so did this guy that I follow. And he posted something about, yeah, all that praise and then praise dancing. You you can do that. You can do that all you want to, but that's not going to heal your trauma. And I Mm -hmm. said, oh, he could. He coming for the saints, y'all. He coming for the religious folks, y'all. Oh, Lord. And then, because I'm always praying about the message that I want to bring on my platform, Single mm-hmm. You, the podcast, to the women I speak to, mm-hmm. um, women of faith, and helping you stop this cycle of dysfunction that you have with men. And so I was like, yeah, man, you know what? What happens to the woman who was told at 12 years old, start praying for your husband, start praying for your Boaz, but now she's 42 and never been married yeah. and maybe never had kids. What happens to that? Her heart, the, that un- is God still good if the prayer was quote unquote unanswered. And so then I brought it to you as my friend, you're my community, you're my, my church community. We went to Howard together, but even after Howard, we've built a, even a stronger and better friendship. I always want to make sure I'm not going off the rails. <laughs> so I was like, cameo, you don't study the Bible. So uh, let me, you know, because you got a master's in this stuff or, or what have you. I am just somebody who is um, studying the Bible for myself, right? I got the books and I got my Bible open and I'm talking to God. So I just wanted to make sure that I was not, again, going off the rails. So I said, cameo, how come those conversations aren't happening? You know what? And I just had this thought. Mm-hmm. They may not be happening. Because we think if we say that I didn't, I prayed for that and I didn't get that, that means God isn't perfect. Yeah. Yeah. God is perfect. And, and, and and it pokes a hole in our faith. Yes. It, it, it shakes, it shakes the table of how we, of the foundation we stood on. 
And I don't know if we have been taught or I don't know if we know how to process when something that we believe was true for so long, something that we preached, something that we lived our life on for so long, we come to find out isn't as true, isn't as solid as we thought it was. Yeah, because we want to have all this crazy faith, right? But then when what you were having faith for, praying for, again, specifically it, it for my land, this husband, and he doesn't come, does that mean everything that you believe about God is wrong? Does that mean you didn't have enough faith? What does that mean? And so again, like you said, it shakes us. But our foundation, unfortunately, was probably a lot of just going to church and not really having a true relationship with God. At least that's where I was. If we're going to be honest up in here, I know we on we on uh, uh, having confessions. We on the Good Girl podcast. That's my confession. Yeah. I did not focus on my relationship with God until I was about 30. When did I get out of that emotionally abusive relationship? Whatever. 33. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. It was in 2017. And, And I think and I think for a lot of us. What it, it when we have unanswered prayers, it also causes us to shift our view about God, right? And it, and it happens to me, and it has happened to me, and it is happening to me, right? Yeah. What? How did I really view God? Did I view Him as a genie? Did yeah. I view only His goodness when I got what I wanted? Did I believe that this relationship or this um, that my faith was only to get? things yep or that i had a certain privilege yep or that i was and i'm going to use some of the words that we use in church but that we were set apart and how we understood set apart meaning that because i was this good person then i basically mm-hmm. got what i wanted yeah, everything i wanted yep right yep. and then we get upset because i think you talked about this a little bit mm-hmm. we get upset when the person who doesn't <laughs> follow the rules yeah. the person who isn't good and we can go a little bit deeper into that mm-hmm. gets gets what we desire yeah yeah and and it causes this kind of trickle down effect of who who then is god and and, and what then is faith mm-hmm. yep. right is yep. it real yeah is <laughs> and then when you come to that conclusion that maybe praying for these things thinking that he's a genie and that I'm going to get what I want. If you really actually look at it, which is what I had to do. I said, wait a minute, hold on. I don't think I just, for some reason I had to wear with all the, the, the thought process to think this through and say, I don't think God operates this way. Mm-hmm. So let me get that relationship and see what God says about how he operates. Cause it's a funny thing. And <laughs> God, I hate saying this name, but he's still a child of God and we're supposed to pray for our leaders. Don't do say remember- it. It's for written on the Good Girl Podcast. The T name. We'll just say the T name. DT. DT was running again, right? And this young lady here in this community, which is a very red community, even though Washington State is very blue, mm-hmm. said, well, I feel like God's telling me to vote for him. Mm-hmm. And I knew that she didn't read her Bible. And I said, but how do you know what God sounds like if you're not reading his, his word? I, I just, you know, and I'm not saying that some people may hear or not hear from God if they're reading or not. But how do you know how Cameo thinks if you've never had a conversation with Cameo? If you've never heard her speak, never read anything she's written. So I'm very leery of people who say things about God who don't actually have that relationship. And I knew that about me. Yeah. So to bring it on back on to me, right? Mm-hmm. So I, again, I had the wherewithal to say, there's cracks in this foundation and God talks about the foundation we're building, right? Mm-hmm. And so I finally wanted to start building it on solid ground. And I wish that I would have listened to my dad when I was 12, 13, 14, 15. You need to focus on your relationship with God because me and your mama ain't getting you into heaven. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. Okay. And so that's what I began to do in my early 30s is to finally get that relationship. And then I learned God is not a genie. I can't just say, God, give me a husband and him go, okay, (laughs) 
Wish granted, <laughs> you know, he's not Will Smith. That's the, <laughs> that's the new genie. You know, I love me some Will. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, and so too, when I, when I think about prayer, this is something we dressed on, uh, we addressed on your podcast as well. Like what is prayer, right? How do we understand it as a society and what is it really? And I think um, just kind of starting off base level, I think we understand as a society that prayer is simply a request. It is simply an ask of God with the expectation that God is going to do what we ask, right? And because we're asking, that's humbling ourselves enough. Um, and, be, you know, because I have the wherewithal to ask God, then he's going to do it. And when God doesn't do it, that's when, you know, we get a little nervous or um, when we begin to question, you know, who God is. And I know we were having this conversation because I think it's most tangible in those spaces. And I think this is a conversation that rises to the top, especially in social media, but with women of faith um, and women who are looking to be married, right? Um, But this applies to so many other spaces in our lives. When we want a loved one healed, right? When we want, um, when we feel like we need something, you know, a better job, a better car, um, when we feel like we need, who knows, right? Our own- We want to be rich. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and God, or it it doesn't happen, or it doesn't happen in the way we desire it to happen. And so I think starting with that baseline is important. And so you asked me this question, so I'm going to ask you this question. What- is prayer to you? How do you define it? Yeah, I, it's communion for me with guys like having the last supper over and over again. Like Jesus, I just, I need to have a conversation with you today. Cause let me tell you something about what he did to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I really approach it now at, on a friendship level. Like this is my friend. This is my homeboy. And I got some feelings in me that I need to discuss with you. Cause you, I need to know like, what's my next move. Um, and I do. And sometimes I do tell Jesus, like, I literally want to hear from you guys. You're not going to scare me if you'd be like daughter, like, <laughs> <you're not gonna laughs> like just can I hear from you, you know? And so I do use prayer as more as relationship. Mm-hmm. And I pray more about God order my steps. Keep me in my right mind. Cause there's a lot of people out here who are not in their right mind that <laughs> we see it. We're seeing it a lot with hmm, our, one of our, I miss the old Kanye. But anyway, <laughs> um, and even with that, I don't know him. So he may be, but anyway, I just always want to be in my right mind and doing what Jesus would do mm-hmm. move. Like, cause that's what he called us to do, to be a light. Right. Mm-hmm. And God, Jesus was our best example So how can I be more like him? And that's what I pray for. So I'm always asking for and seeking, you know, how should I talk to this person if they're coming to me because they have a problem? How should I coach my clients? What should I say to these women? Because that I that is my true purpose right now. I have a heart for single women. But that is prayer to me. Bring at least in this season. Right. And yeah. Lisa this season. And I'm working on understanding wisdom more and what it means to make, quote unquote, the right decision with the three uh, wisdom books, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Job. Like that's what I'm studying right now. So to me, that's prayer. And I, and I like how you um, like how you explain prayer. Right. That it's not it's not all about a request, but it's about it's a dialogue. It's a two way street. It's honesty. Um, it is uh, asking God to give you something so you can complete your purpose, right? It is a humbling experience, right? Because you do have to come to God humble to ask Him for something. Like, like I need, like I don't. Yes, I've been doing this for however many years, but I don't know what's coming. Um, I don't know what's. I don't know the specific needs that only the Holy Spirit can speak to to this woman or to this thing. And so just ensuring that when we are talking about unanswered prayers, let's first make sure we understand what prayer is and how different people um, decide to engage God in prayer. Because I've even heard people like just honestly, like a communication with God is prayer, like tears falling down your face is prayer. Sometimes we do not have the words 
to speak to God, but we are trying to communicate to God in a way and we just can't get it out of our mouths. Right. Um, and so that's, that's, yeah. that's how I understand prayer as well. And for me, it's a, um, it's a place of solace, right? It's a place where I can be spiritually naked. It's a place where I can be, um, share my gutted truths, like about why something hurt me. Right. Even if it's something that's not as becoming of me, um, it's a place of healing because it's it's a two way. It's a it's, it's a confessional too, right? Yeah, yeah. And I see, even having conversations like this with you, with my friends, to me is like a form of like active prayer, I guess, mm-hmm. because God does ask us to share our burdens with one another because mm-hmm. He knows that we need each other. So yes, we're supposed to have this relationship with God. But if I don't have anybody to go to, that isolation and shame is the devil's play, uh, playground. Yeah. The uh, and and of course I have so much shame about how I was living, the choices that I made with men that y'all didn't know for a while, um, until I finally again was transformed by the renewing of my mind. But I see because I wasn't doing this at fifteen. I wasn't having these at, at 25, uh-huh. the deep, con- the, the woman who did my makeup yesterday, we had a wonderful conversation about how she sees God and how I see God. Cause my questions to people are different Yeah, because my heart is different. Now my mind is transformed. I want to know how you see God. Let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about God openly instead of this secret thing, you know, that we do. And I know there is, um, uh, God doesn't want us to be boastful in front of people. And that's why he says, have the prayer closet and all of that. But at least I can have conversation because that's what he wants for us. So I see even this because how many of us can say when we are going to brunches and to loom with our girlfriends, we're having these conversations. Yeah. We're not. And even so (laughs) a part of the foundation, I don't know if I've shared this publicly ever, but a part of the foundation of the Good Girl Podcast was not only my experience, but also the word of God. Confess ye your sins one to another that ye may be healed. Boom. If if I if I cannot <laughs> if I cannot be honest, like first I have to be honest with myself, then honest with God, then honest with my homegirl about this is where I am I I'm struggling. This is where I struggled, right? And in that confession, then is healing. For me and for you. Yes. And so when I think about prayer and us being like confession, healing comes through prayer as well. But we got to be honest. We, we got to be real. And we yes. got to be real down to the T, like mm-hmm. to, to the app. Like, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. even know how to explain how honest we got to be. <laughs> I, I, listen, and, I, and I'll have uh, this is I'm thinking of an example right now. So when, because we've talked about before that, especially in this lane of relationships, women are always looking for that one piece of advice. Sierra, what was your prayer so I can pray this so I can get this thing? Yeah. Instead of being on, instead of talking to Cameo and saying, Cameo, I feel like I want a husband because I need to be validated. I feel like I want a husband because I just want to have sex without um, feeling guilty. I feel like I want a husband because I'm lonely. We don't say those things. We, we because that, that. that's the truth, though. <laughs> that's the, and that's the truth. Who's saying that? Not nary one of us. All of us are just like, I just, I want a man and I want him to pay my bills and I want to, and what does he bring to the table? And then you'll call, I won't say his name, but some of these men who have podcasts, you'll call them asking them for advice on tell me what I need to do so I can get one of you. Listen. So I can, but you're not gonna say so I can be validated. You're not. So I can feel like the prettiest girl in the room. And and when so I talked about the tender swindler on my podcast with my friend Sky, Mm -hmm. and we talked about that. The tender swindler only works because he knew how much we want to be quote unquote in love. And so when a rich man picks you, you're like, what? 
He picked me out of all the women. I must, there must be something special about me. I'm fine. I'm this. I'm da 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 da. I'm about to be with this kind of man. And we see that with women who want to be with basketball players, with football players. If he's the best quarterback on the team and he picks me, there must be something dope with me. There must be. And so I need that validation. So I will put up with whatever BS because I don't care. I'm number one. At least I got the range. Listen, and, and that's, that's how honest it. we need to be. That's how honest. <laughs> that's how honest we need to be. Which which leads me, which leads me to my first uh one of my first points, right? Um, let's, I said which leads me to my first points, and we twenty minutes in. Um, <laughs> we, we on like point number twenty three point five. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to talk about the the I think one of the things that causes um that leads us down this path that we believe. Uh, or that our prayers are unanswered and that we stand on is the Bible verse that talks about God will give us the desires of our hearts. And I think it points to what you said, right? When we say we desire a husband, but is, but is that, is that really, is that really what you desire or, or are you desiring validation? Um, yeah. Are you desiring uh, affirmation? Yeah. Right. Are you yeah. desiring consistent sex? Consistent yeah. good sex, right? Yeah. But but yeah. we we gotta be honest, and I'm not saying good sex comes with marriage, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying, right, right. I right. feel like I heard somebody voice, girl. Uh, uh-uh, that don't mean <laughs> that don't mean it's good. I'm married to him, and he suck. Okay. <laughs> um, but I but I think when we talk about the desires of our heart, I think we we believe that, but but that is very much um like sheep. What is it? Not, well, I always get these cliches wrong. Uh, sheep and wolves clothing. Is that what I'm saying? Is that what I'm trying to say? Wolves and sheep clothing? Uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the sheep is good. We sheep. Okay. We're Jesus, we're sheep. <laughs> Jesus is coming back for the one. We're the one okay. who, you know. Okay. And so a wolf in okay. sheep's clothing. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we believe that. Yeah. Like, like we believe that this is our desire, but what we tell ourselves is some of these other, is some of these other things. But the truth is, is, is the wolf, the honesty up under all of that. So I'm curious, yeah. Rika, for you, when you hear the desires of your heart, but at the same time, you hear this woman who's 52, who's been praying since she was 14, that yeah. she was going to have, have a husband. How do you resolve? How do you reconcile that? Um, with yeah. her in that conversation? Yeah. So, w- so with my clients and what I did for myself is I just started all over. Mm-hmm. I started from the beginning because we know that, sure, it does say that God will give us the desires of our heart, but we also know that the heart is wicked. So when I finally realized that it was me allowing these men to treat me as such, and I needed to a change, I asked myself three questions. It was, who am I? Who does God say I am? And how do I want to show up in this world from now on? And a lot of women, when they're like, well, how do you work on yourself? And how do you become confident? And how do you, I always say, who is the woman that you want to be? And then do everything in your power to become her. So you're going to have to hold yourself accountable for the choices you are making and not being obedient to the woman you said you want to be, right? Because if I asked you, okay, what kind of husband do you want? Do you want to be in an abusive like marriage? Do you want him to be abusive? Do you want him to talk down to you? Do you want him to cheat on you? Do, what, or, or do you want a relationship that's fruitful, fulfilling? Uh, um, flourishing and fulfilling um, a a husband from God. You would, of course, say that, right? Mm -hmm. You would say a husband from God. But in our actions and in our behavior, our behavior is not saying that we want that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get that out of the behavior that we as women and these millennial, our age group is exuding with these men. Mm -hmm. We're, We're not going to get that. So instead, you need to start praying and working on your heart and how to change your behavior. That's why Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's some mind renewal that has to go on because Mm -hmm. I would argue that you're only praying for that because someone told you to. You're only desiring, quote unquote, this husband so badly because society has set us up as such that Mm -hmm. you woman are only valuable once you get, quote unquote, picked. That's the only way you're valuable. Other than that, what are you doing? You, we discard you. So th- I, I believe that most women who come to me who are, you know, we had that young lady um, comment on my TikTok saying her worst fear, she's 27. 
She said she told her mom that her worst fear is never getting married and never having kids. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but my wife <laughs> was a little bit more than that. And I was like, but why though? Where does that come from? And, and I think to, to, to speak to the point about, you know, the only reason that you want that, the only reason that you want a husband um, is because someone has told you that that's what you want and that's what you need, whether explicitly or implicitly. I also want to add to that, that I think, think we desire those things because society has also told us that that is like the greatest accomplishment or expression of life that we can experience, right? That we can only experience a certain amount of joy, a certain amount of love um, in this world. And that is where we find it in that type of relationship. And so I think that that is a part of the equation too, that you can't find this love, this, this, this commitment, this dedication, this intimacy anywhere else except inside this relationship. And I think that's true. However, it's as though that this, this thing that, that, that you're experiencing, like this marriage that this comes with, that that is the end all and be all of life. Absolutely. And it's yeah. not true that like that's it, it can't be true because everybody doesn't get married. Everybody doesn't get married because it's not a promise. So we, we have distorted, over fantasized, and over spiritualized yes. the Bible. Because unfortunately, because we can't necessarily see Jesus, right? That we humans just naturally have to like have something that's tangible. So we mm-hmm. make up whatever we think Jesus is, and then we distort it with Disney fantasy. We distort it with what we see out in the world. Like it's just, there's so much distortion and the devil is doing a great job at that. Hmm. Right. Um, And so again, I just think our prayer, we got to start at the foundation because Jesus, the Bible talks about that. Your foundation, are you on sand or are you on solid ground? Mm-hmm. So when the wind shift, because society is always going to shift about what you need to, well, you need to be asking him what he brings to the table. Well, KS says we need a man who's a high value dude and we need to, it's always going to, the, the times are always going to change. Yeah. So we have to make sure we're taking accountability on our actual relationship with God to figure out what it is God wants for us. We should be asking him instead of like, God, give me a husband. It's God, do you even want me to be married? Yeah. Am I ready to be a wife? How about, how about, how about Sierra's prayer? Actually, and I will say this in that Sierra's prayer, it was more about making her the best woman she could be for him, for whatever mm-hmm. husband was coming. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. Cause a lot of us think we perfect. We in our ego. Yeah. Well, because I'm just a woman I deserve. Yeah. So he better come on with it. That's the honesty we need too. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think, I think too, that, um, Cause I don't want to discount this. Cause you said this a couple of times. This, this doesn't sound like I, 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 let's be clear. I still want to get married. Like, let's be clear. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. It's the both I, and both and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Still want a husband still desire that intimacy in that space. But we also have the very real, um, it's very real because it's not a promise of God that it won't happen. No matter how good of a Christian I am, no matter how often I pray and fast, It could just not happen. And that does not negate from God's goodness. It does not negate from the quality of this lived experience that I have. Um, Neither does it take away from my worth. And those are all the things that we're very much fighting against. And um, so, like we said, Cameo and I do desire a husband. We are just honest with the reality of the world that we live in. Because you, so, you have to remember again, like she said, the Bible does not promise every, like we're all of us ain't going to be rich. All of us ain't getting married. Uh, Some people are going to die too soon. Some, so we have to have faith enough to know, to truly believe that all things work for the good for us. And then this, this worldly form is going to end. And then that's where going to heaven and being with Jesus is the goal this worldly stuff. And I know we got bills to pay. And I do know that it's a natural like feeling to want to be with somebody that's natural, but I think it's more about communion than it is being with a man. 
And yes, Paul talks about, you know, it's better to, to be married than to burn. Okay. But again, there's some steps, there's levels to this and steps that probably should happen first, because I do fear women who are like, oh, my greatest fear is to not be married and not have kids, because then I think you're operating out of that fear. And Uh so then you accept any and everything because they're like, well, but I want to be married so bad. So I'm just going to like be the ride or die. And a lot of us are kind of skewed in our faith where we think we have to stay with somebody and 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 give this give them this unconditional love even though we are it's not being reciprocated because we think like oh well god will change him for me god will change him for me god will change him for me he might not that's god didn't say that we had to be in a relationship that was traumatic that was drama all the time there i think there is a level this is at least what i pray for a level of relationship where yes it's it's going to be hard because dying to yourself is kind of hard uh-huh. to set yourself aside from like your ego to set yourself aside of you not being first to have to like check in with somebody maybe he snores um you know maybe he you know i know people fight about the cap on the tooth paste you know what i mean like that's the hard i want like yeah. when our parents are dying and it's like that's emotional but i don't want him to be taking that out on me yeah and i have the audacity enough to believe that i can get that my greatest fear is not that i won't get married or have kids is that i marry the wrong person listen listen so i'm out here trying to be the best woman i can be to look through the lens of jesus when i'm looking at men is he right for me, God? And am I right for him? Yeah. Am I ready to do this? Am I ready to do this? Yeah. I, I, uh, something you said when you talk about the fear, right? I think sometimes when we use that language, like my greatest fear is being, you know, basically single with no kids, an older woman in that space. Um, I think because society and ourselves, we have internalized uh, the negativity and the scarlet letter A that is on women who are single and, and everything that that comes from, right? Because even, <laughs> even in biblical times, like you were looked down upon, you were scorned if you weren't married by like 21, right? And so I think, no, I know that that is still very much a thread throughout history right but we tie everything else so we try to tie capitalism we tie societal structure to it yeah but i think pushing past all of that is when someone says that it makes me think about how you think about your purpose Mm -hmm. right and do you get joy out of your purpose do you find fulfillment in your purpose because whoever you are by yourself that's who you're going to be in a relationship and I, yeah. I don't know if we if we connect those two very much. So if you're a happy, purpose driven person, you're going to be that in a relationship, right? Yeah. But if you're depending yeah. on your kids or your husband to fulfill you in that way, honey, you're gonna run out. You you're gonna drain them, and then you're yeah. gonna you're gonna end up with it. Devon Franklin, he said it. He was at um he was at uh Pastor Torre's church, and he was talking mm-hmm. about more so purpose driven things. But he said mm-hmm. what happens is we have these great expectations for people and things that are outside of ourselves, right? And we and we set our hopes, our imaginations, our dreams, our joys and these things and we get them. And he said that sets you up, and I'm paraphrasing, but he says that sets you up for the greatest experience you'll ever have with depression. Mm. You know? mm. Because our joy, like all those things, our joy, who we are not rooted in these They're external not rooted things. In the- things it's not the things it's you can and and he went on to say that everything that we think we desire before we get those things can we like we can have them now like the joy you think you that 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 you want in your marriage you can have it now the 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 the, i i I don't know what else you i mean you can't you get sex now but i mean mean, i'm just just being honest but yeah the 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 foundation of mm-hmm. maybe what we mm-hmm. want that comes mm-hmm. with some of these things we can really have now, but and, we're waiting on it. Go ahead. Right. And speaking of sex, like to be honest, so I'm three years uh, abstinent, right? Mm-hmm. And I have been saying for the past like month or two, like, God, I want to have sex so bad. Like, I just want to have sex. But, and there's people I can call. 
I wanted to. It's, there's no shortage. There's, there's no, no shortage. shortage. There's no shortage. Okay. But, and I thank God for keeping me accountable to the woman I say I want to be. Because even if I did, I know that the next day I would wake up in regret. I know that it just wouldn't end well for me because I've been there already. Mm -hmm. I've been there. So it's not, it's not just any guy. It has to be the right guy for me. And you said something about getting, yeah. And I wrote down Devon Franklin. Thank God I wrote it down. Look at Devon and Megan. They did it quote unquote the right way. And unfortunately it still didn't work. And I know, un un sadly and unfortunately, I think we talked about that. That's going to shake a lot of people's faith mm -hmm. because the world is going to say, see, why y'all waiting? It don't matter anyway. It da -da -da -da. They're going to say all of these negative things. And if you know yourself enough to know, like I know me, I can't be out here in these streets. I am not for the streets. I'm not I for them. I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> I just, I got too many emotions. I'm a cancer. I just, I get attached too easy. I care I about people it. so much. Yes. I, I love, I, I love too much and too quickly. I get attached too soon. I have too many emotions. If you don't text me back in two hours, I'm going to be in my feelings. But when I guard my heart and I took that off the table and it's been three years, I'm so peaceful. If you don't text me back, I'd be like, okay, I, like uh, whatever. And half the time it just because he was at work or whatever. Like it, it don't even be the negative spiral that I was in. But I've given myself pause enough to realize, oh, you tripping right now, Rico. Okay, let's just bring him back in. And then I'll tell you or I'll pray about it or I'll talk to God about it and then I'll be over it. But that attachment, that unhealthy attachment that I have with men, once I do that, I, I know myself enough to know I can't do that. But anyway, back to even just Devon and Megan. I think as people of faith, we have to realize we're not going to get everything we want. This yeah. life was not meant to be. It was, but then Eve took a bite of the apple. So this life is not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. We live in a sinful, fallen world. And a lot of us faith-based people don't want to admit that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> and then we'll move on to the last point. But the other thing that we need to be leery of and be aware of <laughs> is that the silver bullet approach is what sells, right? Um, it is what we are attracted to. It is what marketing campaigns <laughs> are built off of. It is what a lot of these ministries stand on. Is that this is this one thing is the answer, and then you will get what you want. That that, that is what that is what I see, and we buy into it. We buy into it every single time. Yeah. Fast for 40 days. I promise you you're gonna get an answer. Emma? No, you might not. Because we don't and we don't want to have that conversation. We we don't. Mm -hmm. you, we, you know, yeah. someone lay your hands on you. Your husband coming, you 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 gonna be your womb gonna be full in two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's not though. It's it's, it's it's five years later, and it's still not. That's why I don't let people prophesize over me, and that's a whole nother conversation. But I did have a TikTok um from the video I uh, posted that sparked this conversation. She did say she had two people prophesy over her time out. She was going to be married by like 25 and she now like 42. Here we are. Here we are. So, so the last thing that I think I'll say is I think a lot of our prayers, what we don't, I like to reframe stuff and um, unanswered prayers and how we tend to look at it. Uh, when we are asking God to do something and we do believe something is unanswered, I think we have this expectation reframe again, I'm reframing this, is that we are attempting to override God's will when we pray, right? I don't know if we are consciously aware that that's what we're doing or that's what we're trying to do when we pray. God, I want this to happen. I want this to happen. I want this to happen. That, 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 that we are attempting to override God's will. And when I say attempting to, I think there's also another narrative out there when we do pray and we ask God, like, I want to stay in the center of, of your will. If I move to another city, is that going to, am I going to be out of your will? If I, if, if you know, if I, um, uh, I don't know, if I eat this food, right? If I take this job, is it going to be out of your will? But when I was in seminary school, I had a professor and he reframed that for me. 
because it took a lot of worry and anxiousness off of me because I used to ask those questions all the time. And it used to be, in my humble opinion, it used to be ridiculous, like the way I would ask questions and about what, instead of just trusting the spirit and trusting the Holy Ghost. Um, It was, do you really think that you are powerful enough as a single individual to override, to disrupt God's will? I'm going to throw this pen at you, Cameo. (laughs) (laughs) We're not that powerful. We're not that powerful. Like, we are powerful beings, but I I don't have the power to override override something that God intends to happen. Exactly. And I think that's what our (laughs) prayers hope. I think sometimes that's what we hope. We hope for. Yeah. 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 And honestly, like... I don't know, Cameo. I just think, what if, what if we don't even know God's will for our life until we get there, until we get to heaven, right? I know we're such a like purpose, find your purpose, find your purpose, find your purpose, find your purpose. And what I tell everybody um, is that I think that right now, if you feel like you don't quote unquote know your purpose, how about you just try to be like Jesus and go from there? And see where that leads you. Because I just, I think like a lot of things that we say and, uh, well, well, this is God's will in my life. And this is the man God made for me. And this is, I'm like, did he though? I don't know. (laughs) Do we really know? Do, I mean, again, there, I'm, is there somebody out there who maybe heard an audible from God and they did, because Megan Good said that God told her did. Devon Franklin was her husband. He did. I remember that. So again, do we really know? Do we really know? And I'm not saying that was right or wrong. I'm yeah. I, I love Maven Good and Devon Franklin. I'm sad for yeah. them, you know, but also happy if they're happier with it. Cause I believe in divorce. Like I'm not somebody who's like, girl, you can't get divorced because you're going to hell and God hates divorce. And that no. Mm-hmm. So I just I I'm in a space where sometimes I'm just like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I think that's something we just going to have to ask Jesus when we get there. Yeah. 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 I, I, I love the uncertainty, right? Yeah. Because that's yeah, something yeah. we don't like to sit in. And I think this no. is what this conversation is about. Yeah. I think uh, in our institutions, I think in the word of God, we tend to focus on the certainty of God. Right. But very much throughout every story, it's littered with uncertainty. It is it is it is encased in uncertainty, right? Uh, with people just not knowing what was next, it, it, un- uncertainty, but yet and still we profess a lot of our preachers and our teachers and even some of us who be on the gram and who be on social media, we profess from a seat of certainty. And I don't, life is not about certainty. The faith is very much a, a walk in the dark. It is a walk in the dark. And I think that's where a lot of these unanswered prayers land, but they feel so disconnected from God because of what society has told us that our, that our prayers should be answered and that we are blessed when God answers our prayers. Mm -hmm. And we Mm -hmm. are, but that doesn't mean we are any less blessed because God redirects us or it indicts our faith when our uh, Mm -hmm. prayers prayers aren't answered. And so Mm -hmm. I, Mm -hmm. I love this space. I've, I've had to come to learn to love the space and I'm still learning mm-hmm. the space of uncertainty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that if we're honest, if, if, if most of us could be honest with our, with ourselves, with our subconscious and say, I am very uncertain about God, it would shake our faith. And we would question on, especially because there are a lot of naysayers and people who make fun of us for believing in Jesus. And the Bible does say that at the end of times, we're going to be persecuted for being Christian so when we say we're uncertain, then we question like, so then why do we believe? Mm-hmm. And, and we got to get to that answer. Why do you believe? Yeah. And I will, I will tell you for me, it is, I see the difference between the old Rika, I would call her and to the woman that I've been for the past five years to the, even the last three years of being abstinence, the change, the, the, the God that I'm talking to now, who I believe him to be. And I, and it's just, it's, it's sometimes it is hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I just know that I know that I know that I believe. That's such a good question. 
Mm-hmm. And 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 for me to answer it because I had I have a I have a different story, right? I have mm-hmm. a story of following the rules, being obedient, being a good girl, right? Yeah. Being a virgin for 50 million years, right? Right. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Um, <laughs> um and, and still not getting what I thought that that would get me, right? So I I I have a I have a slightly different story. Um, but when people ask me why do I believe it has nothing to do with the rules, right? You would think it, you would think it does. And the things that following the rules has, has profited me, but I've had too many real experiences with God, right? Mm -hmm. I've had, I've had God humble me in ways and private, right? Like God being nice to me, like, look, I'm, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you take this one on a chin in private, and I'm gonna, sh- and I'm yeah. gonna show you, right, you be- or, or who you've co- like, even, even my train of thought, like Cameo, that could have been you. Like you, you see how she, you see, you, you know exactly where her head is. You know how she got there. That could have been you, all but for my grace. And I don't even know where it started or where it began, but I know it was, I know it was nothing but God. No, it was nothing but God. Girl, there'll be instances. There have been many instances in driving where I knew God protected me from an accident. Mm. And I, it, and it's, it's crazy. Like, again, it's so hard to explain, but I can feel it. And then like, you know, I, I make a sudden move or something in my car and I'll be like, Oh, thank you, God. Cause that was definitely about to be an accident Mm -hmm. or, and it, and it was, it's just, or or even like when I say things sometimes I'll be like, thank you, God. Cause I really do. Sometimes I'll be, I I identify with Moses a lot with that. Like, I don't know what to say, God, I'm a stutterer. I'm this. And God was like, did I not make your mouth? Do not worry (laughs) about what you're going to say. I will give you the words. And sometimes like God is gifting me those words. And it it is, it's definitely a feeling, a knowing Mm-hmm. And so I believe because I believe, but I don't believe in Jesus just so he can give me a husband or just yeah. so he can make me rich or just so, so. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is what, this is really what um, I hope this conversation would, would do for folks that are listening um, is that you feel a little bit more comforted in your unanswered prayers and that you think it not strange when your prayers are unanswered or when you simply don't get the desires of your heart, even though that's what the word of God said, but that they are recategorized um, or even that your mind I'll say is recalibrated. It's renewed in terms of how we think about what we want and how that connects to our relationship with God. Um, Or if it should connect to our relationship with God Um, and where does our joy, where does our peace, where, 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 where do the, like, what, what is a desire? Like what really is a desire of our heart? Because we may understand it one way, right? We may understand it is a husband, but is that really a desire of the heart? A heart has intangible things, right? Is a desire of the heart joy? Is it peace, right? Is it communion with another soul, right? And and so I, I hope that as you listen to this, right, that one, that you do not think it's strange, that you do not indict your own self or indict your faith because your prayers are unanswered. And then you understand that uncertainty is a part of the journey. If not, it is the journey. Yes. Uncertainty is the journey. It's sufficient for the day. It is the journey. So Rika, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yep. For this topic, for this question, I thought it was so amazing. Yeah. Um, to yeah. really dig dig down um in here. So if you haven't already, um make sure you're following us on Instagram and we're hey. to this, this, this TikTok thing up. <laughs> and you're doing you being so consistent i'm so proud of you <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah i don't know what yeah. that sound was i don't know <laughs> it's the joy coming out the heart <laughs> it is it yeah. is yep. it is um and also we'll be doing something new where you can leave your phone number and we'll send you a text anytime a podcast comes out but we need at least in my humble opinion we need at least 50 of y'all to be sent. we can't be sending this text to to my mama because that's the only person that didn't sign up but you can you can <laughs> and Rika Rika about to sign up and my mama yes yes <laughs> um so that's all we have for you thank you so much for listening to the good girl podcast